It is a fact of life in hockey. There are injuries. Some are minor, annoyances dealt with by trainers and ice packs. Some are career ending, forcing men to walk away forever from a potential career and from a love of the game. For others, a special blend of fortitude and luck gets them off the shelf after a long recovery period and back on the ice, once again charged with harnessing their dreams. It was uh, kind of a freak accident. I just went to hit a pretty big boy, Douglas Murray, San Jose, and uh, you know, it's probably the wrong guy to hit, but uh, I mean, I'm a guy that likes to finish my check, and kind of, I hit him, and if it just fell into the boards, awkward, just kind of a freak, freak accident, but Again, this is a sport where you're going to get injured and it's just stuff that you have to deal with. You know, we had such a long time off the ice in game situation. Uh, got hurt in Vancouver's training camp uh, last year. So in, in reality, he's had over a year off going from his last game in the American Hockey League. So he's gone, went through the summer, then he went through basically all of uh, last year without playing. So he's, he's starting to get his stride back, but the whole timing and uh, getting in on plays and everything, uh, it'll all come. Uh, you know, I've seen him over the years, and he, he's a he's he's a guy that you recognize on the ice, and the other team realizes he's on the ice too because they always got to keep their head up. So uh, he's he's played well for us, but I, I know we can play better. Heads up. I think it's just getting his timing and when to go and, and anticipating plays and a lot of times when you when you have good hits and everything you you're anticipating to where the puck's going so you get there when the guy receives the puck and you make your hit so uh, he's got to get back into that mode and uh, you know rightfully so he's been off for so long. Hey, middle, middle. Oh. I was off skates for eight, eight full months, and uh, you know, it's funny, you kind of try to find things to do, but there's only so much you can do, especially when you get limited to do, doing stuff, uh, especially physically. So, I mean, it, uh, it took its toll, but I kind of just, just battled through it. He's a guy that uh, you know has missed a whole year of hockey, and his game has gradually gotten better and better you know, from day game one. Well, from training camp, I know he even said he had a lot of rust on him. Um, you know, he just felt a little weird out there. Things, you know, timing was off, and you just really saw his game really come to fruition. And uh, you know, he's he's a guy that uh, every day is you know another another step for him. And uh, you know, he's a guy that's been in this league, he's won a championship in this league, and you know, has, would love to play in the NHL if it ever starts again. So he has to get his game at a level that just is a constant, steady game that uh, he knows how to play, and he needs to do it every night. It's funny, you don't, when you get back to the game, you realize how, how much you're behind, and you know, you, th you think about it the whole year, saying, when I'm going to get going, I'll be, I'll be just as good, if not better, and that's, it's a big reality check when you get playing. You'll, you'll see a play, and then it'll it'll, it'll be turned down pretty quick. So you just kind of have to adjust to the the level of speed, and then uh, once that comes, I mean, everything else comes along with it. Heads up, baby. Ah. For Pinizzato's teammates, his contributions and potential are obvious. He's a good guy to have on the team. I mean, he works works unbelievable every day. Works hard. He's, uh, I don't know. He's probably one of the biggest hitters in the American League right now. I mean, the, the guy doesn't let up anytime. He's always hit, hitting hitting as hard as he can. He's got a he's got a, a skill set that he has. I think is very underrated that people don't realize how good he is with the puck and his offensive ability. And I think that's going to come out this season. Working it, Rodi going to that Pinizzato pass. It's stuck. Yes. Should we just get it and shoot it right away, or are you going to move? Andrew Ebbett knows how difficult it is to return after a major injury. I feel this is a little bit of pressure to make sure I get back. I mean, I've uh, um, been a good player in, in this league, and I think i got to come back and almost prove that I'm, a, I'm still that same player coming back from a, a bad injury last year, and I think Steve feels the same way. Sterling, a nice move. His shot kicked away. Pinizzetta shoots. He scores. There it is. We talked to him before the game, and he buries his first of the year. 
I think I told Shaves here it's been about 600 days before I scored my last goal. So, uh, you know, they say you get the monkey off the back, but again, it's just, it's just timing and getting, getting to the right, the right spots. And, uh, you know, everyone wants to score a goal, so it was, it was a good weekend. Steve Pinizzato is one of those lucky guys. Luck only gets him so far, though, and nothing about this has been easy. I like to say a little bit of luck, but I mean, getting shots to the net, you know, playing, playing with good, good offensive players, that helps too. And I mean, sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. And I'm a, I'm a streaky player too when it comes to goals. But uh, like I said, I just, just getting pucks to the net and driving there and uh, good things happen that way you can. Man, I tell myself all the time, but when I actually have like a good play to shoot, I'll still look for a pass. Steve is a team guy and the success of his teammates and the tally in the win column is foremost on his list of priorities. Whenever Shreds get the puck, it kills me. His head's up the whole time. He never, ever, ever looks down. Great, great bunch of guys, awesome guys. Um, it's good when you have a, when you have a happy team, uh, an uplifting team, that's, that's where you, you, you bring it onto the ice and that's kind of what's going on. That's kind of why we're sitting, uh, I mean, tops of the league right now. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it, it's an exciting group to be a part of. And uh, again, that's like, again, when everybody's happy, that's when you're winning. Despite fast starts on an individual and team level, Steve still has moments when everything he went through to return to the ice comes rushing back. First 30 seconds, like, I legitimately couldn't hear anything out of my ear. And it was just, just kind of freak, you know? Like, how is this happening again? And, I mean, it worked out right. Might have caught him in the eye. This goal, yeah. Kevin Kaser comes onto the ice. We were going for a puck, and he went to put, I guess, his stick around my body, and he, like, jabbed me right in my ear, kind of. So I kind of lost hearing for about 30 seconds, so it was pretty freaky, but then uh, kind of ringing, getting back, but then, uh, I mean, maybe an inch towards the left, and probably my eye would have been gone. But again, it's hockey, it's a fast game, and you can't control stuff like that. So just luckily, I got the, the good part of that, that side, that's for sure. It's kind of a selfie play, though. Huh? Yeah. In tight switch like that? Like that. For Steve Pinizzato, right here, right now, no door is shut.